All right, where were we going here? Consciousness. Consciousness. All right, see, I, you know, that's the thing. It flows through us, and our creativity is a manifestation of that flow. Yeah. So when you're having a conversation, and it goes in the direction, and you stop it and lose it, yeah. you, you can't reconstruct that exact flow again. Yeah. And I think that's what we were talking about, consciousness being a limit cycle. Yeah. So, that, you know, we have parameters in terms of our emotions, and in terms of, because what can you be doing? You're, you're feeling the now. Where is that now coming from? It's coming from your outside, or it's coming from your inside and your past, or it's coming from how you've assembled the two of those and are able to project a future. You know? And that's what we do. We sit here, sucking in what's coming in, processing what we've already had, and trying to move into a future. And if you're stuck looking backwards, then you tend to not deal as much with the now as other than to try and recreate the now as the past. You know, you have those so tightly linked. Or you're a visionary, you look into the future, you take that future, you process it through the now so that in the next instant you can become more consistent with your environment and minimize the stress, minimize the free radical production, minimize the aging of the system. You want to you want to be as smooth as you can, and in order to be smooth as you can, you got to keep sharpening the knife. And what's the knife? It's the interface of your consciousness with your existence. Yeah. All right. So you want to always refine that, minimize the free radical and other negative consequences. And how do you do that? You do that by knowledge of the physics that created us, because that's what you want to do. Be part of the future. You've got to take where you are, which is the summation of the past and bring it into the future, meaning interface with the now, and again, try to always shape it so that you're shifting in a way that's going to optimize your interaction for the future with your environment again, so that you can maintain Which, yourself. In turn, go to the future of that future. Of that, yeah, it's a reiterative process, constantly reiterating, which, which is what the fractal, why there's this fractal-like nature to existence. We're constantly doing the same general thing and that's having the same kinds of consequences either a system grows may remain stable or decays that's it those are the only three possibilities right yeah. so as you know living entities from childhood we grow we have a natural tendency biologically physically for the structure to grow you know we keep eating yeah, makes us bigger yeah. everything we're taking in is new because it hasn't been come in yet you know so that's you know you look at the vitality of youth yeah. that's because all of those things are happening then we become an adult yeah. well what that means is that we've had this physical growth and mental growth that went with it, and now the physical growth isn't happening anymore, but we still have to maintain the system far from equilibrium. Mm -hmm. It was natural during childhood and growth, and now we have to assume responsibility for the thermodynamics that creates us and maintains us. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do as adults is now gain the knowledge of the process so that we can use the process. That's kind of like the capping point of, of maturation. Yeah. is to embrace the physics. It's in your hands now. It's in your hands yeah, now. Just exactly. Do you deserve to live yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah. We are biochemical experiments. Each of us as individuals and how we contribute to the whole that's greater than the sum of the parts, which is our species, us. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's another huge thing I think you just said about like, the aging and maturation. Yeah, it's true though. Which, again, takes yeah. us back to the cannabinoid system and open-mindedness. Yeah. Can we embrace the knowledge of the physics that creates us? And how do we have the openness and the flexibility to really utilize it? And how successful can we be as individuals and as collections of individuals? You know, what is that resonance that occurs when you have not just catalytic consciousness occurring within an individual, but groups of people who are then shaping society, the interactions of society, the nature of our family, and the outcome of that will be a nonlinear change in lifespan. You know, we've kind of like dicked around, you know, we improve lifespan because we're a little less dirty than we used to be, and you know, all of these things, but those are not real embodiments 
of the physics. They, they are embodiments, but they're not really embracing where it could go. Those are just like little accidental occurrences, and we've got little linear incremental changes. Once, once we, as what I would say blips, fl fl rather flips, forward-looking people, start to embrace the future in a way that we are modifying our society to become consistent with the future, mm -hmm. then we will have a spread in our consciousness that will change the entire society and how we interact with that society, and that will become more nutritious from a physical point of view, yeah. and that will allow us to maintain our distance from equilibrium for a longer period of time, and we will see a nonlinear change in humanity's lifespan. Mm -hmm. Or, we won't do that, we won't become consistent with the physics, we will have a decay of our flow-dependent structure, and a decay of our social structure, and mankind potentially will go extinct. Mm -hmm. I like the description of human flow-dependent structures. That's all we are. Yeah. True. <laughs> and, you know, our health is dependent on it, and our health is not simply the health of an individual. It's the health of the society. And what that health is determined by its interactions with its environment. It cannot be a one-way street of taking, making, and throwing out. We have to develop stable, steady-state societies that will be nourishing to the planet as well as to the individuals. It's mandated. And we can't just look back and say, oh, you know, man's been saying this for so many years and blah, blah, blah. Now is the time that we are running out of oil. Now is the time that we are polluting everything. I mean, you, you go to water, sample water anywhere in the world, and you find it's got... You know, stuff in it that shouldn't be there, and that destabilizes the genetics and, you know, destabilizes the interactions, and the whole system now is, you know, do we want it to grow or collapse? And those are the options, and we have to become part of the future, not stuck in the past, because if, well, if we make the past our future, we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>